All right, so you know times are tough when I'm getting excited over a pre-built gaming PC. Typically, the consensus has been that building something yourself, you can save a ton of money, which can then allow you to budget for better PC hardware. These days though, as we know, things are a bit different. Actually getting your hands on a current gen GPU is incredibly difficult and even if you can, prices are absolute insanity. To give you an idea, this RTX 3060 Ti should retail for about $400 to $500 US, which here in Australia that would mean about seven to 800 AUD. Instead, these are going for double that at around 1500 AUD. This entire PC on the other hand only cost me 2000 AUD and it does include an i7, which is an eight core CPU you've got 512 gigs of NVMe storage and some reasonably fast memory in there as well. And I did also add a liquid cooler, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. But today we're going to see if this is actually worth it and what you need to know if you are going to buy one as well. So if you're buying a Dell XPS pre-built, this is what you get. The enclosure itself is actually reasonably compact, which I can appreciate, and aesthetically I think we can agree it's an okay design as well. The entire XPS enclosure comes in at just 18.9 liters in total volume, which technically passes this as a small form factor case. It is just made of steel and plastic though, so don't expect much in terms of build quality. Then at the front, you'll have your power button and a ton of front I.O., including USB Type-C and a handy SD card reader. Otherwise, it's a very basic looking PC and opening it up, it looks even more basic and OEM than you could imagine. This specific machine is fitted with an eight core Intel i7 11700, 16 gigabytes of memory clocked at 2933 megahertz, one and a half terabytes of total storage, including M.2 NVMe for the boot drive. And the main event, of course, the RTX 3060 Ti. This is the entire reason that this XPS pre-built is interesting in the first place. Dell being a big system integrator and maker of pre-builds, they are among the first priority when it comes to GPU stock allocation. So that's why they're able to get 30 series cards in the first place while you can't get them at retailers. And that's also why the pricing isn't so bad either. Also the 3060 Ti OEM card that's included here does seem to be actually not bad. It's a very compact two slot dual fan cooler design and a section of the back plate is cut out to allow for some of that hot air to escape towards the case's rear exhaust fan. I'm also very happy to report that there's nothing horrific here to note when opening up that side panel, and this machine does at least seem to be assembled with some care. Cable management is good enough, all of the connectors are plugged in where they should be, and the RAM dims are inserted in the correct slots. I also do like the anti-sag bracket for the graphics card, which is mostly to keep it nice and safe during transport. Then as for the power supply, it's an 80 plus platinum 500 watt unit, and for future GPU upgrades you have an 8 plus 6 pin PCIe connector. So what would something like this cost if you were to build it yourself. Well, sticking to the Australian market, just to keep it as an apples to apples comparison, it would cost me about $600 or 30% more, not factoring in case fans, aftermarket CPU cooler, or a Windows license key. In the US, this spec would put us at around $1,800 USD, which is definitely less of a deal than the one I've got here, but still not bad at all, given the current circumstances. And you do have a lot more customization there in the US market. All right, but that's enough talk. Let's see if this thing is actually any good. One of the first things that you'll want to do on any pre-built gaming PC is a complete wipe of all of the third-party software. This stuff cripples performance by running in the background, uses up a ton of memory, and is just generally not useful. This Dell XPS 3060 Ti machine is no exception. Upon boot, I was constantly spammed with pop-ups for the installed antivirus and Dell's own support software, but most concerningly, there was an audio driver process that was absolutely eating up all of the memory. No exaggeration here, you can literally see it consuming more and more RAM by the second until total RAM usage for the system is completely maxed out. Why this Realtek audio process running in the background needs over 11 gigabytes of system memory, I have absolutely zero clue. It was also causing the CPU to pull a hefty 70 watts plus just idling, which meant that a few cores here would consistently sit above 85 degrees C, and that meant that the fan speed was pretty audible there just sitting on the desktop. At this point, I just did a fresh install of Windows, expecting it to be totally 
quickly clean afterwards, but unfortunately, it seems that Dell Prebuilts will default back to reinstalling their version of Windows with all of the bloatware that's originally on it. So that means that the antivirus and general Dell junk was just back on it, and also the super weird Realtek audio driver that eventually consumes all the memory was back as well. So really, the only option that you have here is to manually uninstall all of these third-party apps, and then as for fixing the Realtek audio driver, you need to open services, end that specific process, and then restart your PC. Now, for whatever reason, it won't consume a bunch of memory, and strangely, system audio sounds exactly the same. So at this point, we're ready to talk about performance. How exactly does a Dell XPS machine with a 3060 Ti in there perform when it comes to gaming and heavy workloads? Well, some of you may have noticed this block of metal that Dell strapped onto the CPU and called it CPU cooler. Basically, this is inadequate in every single way and is highly recommended that you swap it out. In heavy CPU workloads, it will cripple the 8 core to pull below 70 watts just so that it can maintain a safe thermal range, and that means that all cores will settle below 2.7 gigahertz. And of course, it's nowhere near adequate to handle the i7 during shorter duration bursty workloads where it can pull over 190 watts. There you'll see all cores at 100 degrees C pretty quickly. How Dell thinks this is adequate? I have absolutely no clue. It's a bit better when it comes to gaming though, generally sitting around 85 degrees C for the CPU, but again, that's while consuming lower power and running at lower clock speeds, with the fan speed on the cooler pretty loud as well. As for our RTX 3060 Ti though, it surprisingly looks pretty solid, and I'll admit, taking one look at the XPS enclosure, I thought that this thing was going to choke to death immediately, but here it's surviving more than fine at 75 degrees at a room ambient of 20. That's also while running at pretty typical 3060 Ti performance and clock speeds as well. So what options do you have for upgrading that CPU cooler? Well, weirdly, not many at all. For whatever reason, Dell have actually integrated the CPU cooler mounting bracket into the case, which is probably the weirdest thing that I've seen in a while, and this prevents us from installing our own CPU coolers and mounting kits. Funnily enough though, what does manage to fit perfectly into this mounting bracket is Acetec's own mounting kit for Intel CPU. Use. So NZXD Kraken coolers, for example, will technically be absolutely fine here, but then of course we run into another problem. This case doesn't have any radiator support. That's except for the 92mm fan slot that you have at the back of the case, which means that one possible option is Acetec's own 645LT, a pretty powerful 92mm AIO. Installing this one is pretty simple, positioning the fan as exhaust, plugging the radiator fan into the CPU fan header, and then plugging the pump connector into the system fan header, along with one of Noctua's low noise adapters. This will prevent the pump from running at its max 6000 RPM and instead a much quieter 3800 or so. If that's still too loud for you, you can just simply add another adapter. So yeah, I didn't expect to be liquid cooling this one, that's for sure, but it is actually a very viable option to get more performance out of this machine. For one, thermals across the board are significantly lower, and that means that our i7 can now run at significantly higher clock speeds. In Cinebench, we improve our score by over 20% just with a cooler upgrade, with the CPU now comfortable at a much higher 3.2 GHz and 96 watts continuously, while only being 60 degrees C. This does mean that we technically have more headroom for overclocking, but since we're working with a locked CPU that doesn't support that, that's not an option. What we can do in Intel's XTU software though is increase the duration that the CPU runs at its first power limit of 225 watts, and we can increase that from 28 seconds to 128 seconds. This means for heavy CPU workloads that run for upwards of 2 minutes, you'll get a significantly higher performance now at 4.4 GHz, and our liquid cooler seems to be able to sustain that no problem. Weirdly though, the CPU cooler swap didn't see any increase in gaming performance really much at all, as the i7 seems to manage its power reasonably okay there, even with the stock cooler. For CPU intensive games though, you would expect there to be a small difference there at least. So with a 3060 Ti and an i7 in there, I'd say that this is the sweet spot for a 1440p gaming machine. Story based single player titles can be played with high graphics and decent enough frame rates, and competitive titles won't feel lacking at all. In the end, you get the gaming performance that you would expect from a 3060 Ti gaming machine. Most notably, here with this pre built, GPU thermals and clock speeds are totally under control, which is great, and the system really isn't too loud to sit next to, now even quieter with that liquid cooler.
So I would say that yes, pre-builds, at least this one here, they are a viable option for a gaming PC today and the value totally makes sense too in our current times. It is so weird to be saying that because usually it's the complete opposite, but these days if you're building something yourself, high chances are that you're being significantly overcharged. That's not to say that this one was perfect, in fact, far from it. The Dell XPS is your usual pre-built, bundled with a ton of bloatware that needs to be eliminated and insufficient CPU cooling. Not to mention, I did have to wait a couple of months for this one to actually arrive, although other configurations would have shipped a lot sooner. After some tweaks though, for sure, this is totally a great gaming machine for the money in today's almost impossible PC hardware market. Also, if you're looking for more benchmarks for the 30. 60Ti and what kind of gaming performance you can expect there, I will leave my full performance review linked down below, as well as the Dell XPS machine itself too. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.